We are on board the maiden voyage for the Celebrity Ascent. We're sharing with you our honest first impressions. And unfortunately, not everyone on the ship is very happy. Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Jordan. And I'm Jared. And we are JJ, JJ Cruz. Cruz. <laughs> like I said, we're coming to you from our stateroom on board the Celebrity Ascent. I think this is day three or four. I, I kind of get lost sometimes <laughs> in the mix, but we've gotten to experience a little bit of the food, a little bit of the entertainment, as well as the ship. And I think it's time for us to share with all of you at home, what are our first impressions? But before we get into it, please subscribe to the channel. We are so close to hitting our goal of 50,000 subscribers. You can be the difference to getting us to 50K. And while you're at it, hit that thumbs up. We appreciate it. A few days ago, we boarded Celebrity's biggest cruise ship, the Celebrity Ascent, out of Fort Lauderdale. We got to Port Everglades, got on this ship, and since then, we have experienced a decent amount of the ship. There's still so much more to experience, so at the end of the week, we will be releasing a full, in-depth review, but today we wanted to give you just some of our initial first thoughts. We're no strangers to maiden voyages, including the maiden voyage of the world's largest cruise ship, Wonder of the Seas by Royal Caribbean. We've been on many different ones, but what we want to do is talk about our first impressions here for different categories, including that of the overall ship design, the staterooms, you have the food and beverages, the entertainment activities, as well as our overall thoughts. And at the very end, we're going to talk about what people are so upset by on this ship. So let's kick this off by talking about the ship. Now, when we walked on board, we expected the ship to be a carbon copy of the Celebrity Beyond because it's about the same size. And from a perspective of looking at the maps, it looks like most of the venues are the same. But that wasn't true. We actually have a brand new venue on Celebrity Ascent called The Annex. Now this hadn't been really talked about, it was a surprise once we got on board, but the Annex is a brand new, unique experience that you can share with your friends, completely private. You have to book it through the Shore Excursions desk. And once you do, you have the options of doing virtual golf or other sports, as well as karaoke, maybe even a private movie experience, or if you wanna watch the big game, with your friends, with some snacks and some beverages, you can do so all in the Annex. We haven't done this experience yet, but we plan to. So for our full review coming later on in the week, we will share what that experience was like. Something else that we noticed is very different is newly redesigned spaces. The Casino, the Cosmopolitan, one of the main re uh, dining room restaurants, those are both designed very differently. We love the pool deck and if you watched our beyond review we found some really ugly plastic cacti on the pool deck well those have all been removed and the pool deck looks clean and very resort like you also have redesigned la voyage as well as a completely redesigned art gallery all of these on our first impressions look gorgeous and kudos to whoever redesigned them and yes celebrity we are still waiting on that paycheck for the octopus that sits up on deck 14. This is our honest review, so we're going to talk about the good, but we're also going to talk about the not so good, the things that our first impressions weren't the best. The one really negative for us is that there was no new specialty dining venue or no new dining venue in general. We really hoped they would do something new just for those that have already been on the Beyond, but that did not, well, turn out. Next up, we're going to talk very briefly about our stateroom. Now, we did release a full and very in-depth stateroom tour. We're in a deluxe inside cabin. Overall, we really do like this cabin, but Jared goes into some very, very in-depth parts um, of what it's like to stay in this cabin. So you'll definitely want to go over to that video to check out what we think of the cabin. The next section is food and beverages. This is a very important thing. When you come on a new ship, you want to make sure the food matches or is better than the others. And we are happy to say from the first few days, the food has been fantastic. We've experienced specialty dining as well as main dining room, buffet, and some fast casual, and all of which have been some of the best food we've had on any celebrity ship. Many of the menus in the main dining rooms have been very similar to other celebrity ships, foods that we know and love, but we think that the best versions of these foods we have had in the last few days here on the Celebrity Ascent. We've been very impressed with the food, and uh, we definitely have not gone hungry while we've been here so far. <laughs> Something we really loved and is different per ship is the late night menus. The snacks and the buffet, if you will, including pizza, salads, pasta, desserts, little sandwiches, all of which 
are open until 2 a.m. That is a huge change up from some of other ships that go as early as midnight where they close down and you have to order room service. So we absolutely love that change to 2 a.m. On top of this, there are some new menus as well. Yes, there are new food items on the menu in Craft Social. For an extra charge, you can order some food items in there, as well as there is a menu for the Annex. So that venue that we just mentioned where you can rent out with friends, that is another area where you can order food, and that menu we will be reporting back on later this week. The negative for first impressions here for the food and drinks is that some of the drink options have actually raised in price a little bit and it is so varied that we cannot go through them all here but on first look some people are already noticing that maybe their wine choice is higher than the premium package which is what we have here or even some of those craft cocktails are just a little bit more expensive than what they were maybe a year ago uh, but overall the drinks taste delicious you just might have a little bit of an upcharge all of the drinks have been very good except for the frozen mojitos next let's talk about service this is a huge huge category because this can make or break any cruise but maiden voyages we usually give a little leeway to just because it's brand new crew on board a brand new ship they still have to kind of figure out where things are especially that bottle of wine or what have you but we've been pleasantly surprised with the service for the food the wait staff has been great we had to get to a show within an hour and challenge our waiter in a way by <laughs> saying can we do this and the waiter said are you kidding me I'm gonna make it happen, and he did. It was a really good welcome surprise, and we made that show. But on the flip side, the beverage service in the main dining rooms is not so good. Um, one of our evenings there, we actually never even got served wine or beverages. No one came over to check on us to see if we wanted anything additional to drink. And the next night when we did order a couple of drinks, it took a very long time to get the drinks. And it seemed like all around us, the sommelier and the beverage server were getting drinks incorrect or forgetting things. So it seems like maybe they're really understaffed when it comes to beverage service in the dining rooms. This is the only area that we have seen this in, but so far it's not been so good. We know it's a maiden voyage. This can change even within the next cruise, but just have to give you our honest take. When talking about activities, we have seen a lot of new activities pop up on this ship, which is really fun. And we've seen activities which are great, and then we've seen some activities that are just so-so. Yes, the brand new Game On, which is this virtual kind of reality mixed with you are the game player on this game board. There's six different game boards all happening in the club. It is obviously gonna be a huge hit. People love it already. Highly recommend, we'll talk more about it in our full review at the end of the week, but on the flip side, there is another new thing on board that was, well, a want want. <laughs> they are doing pub night or pub games at the club, and those games were all kind of really small little games game boards not a lot of people showed up for it we went way early because we thought it was going to be packed and everyone that did come was quite disappointed um, in how the event just really looked it was not the best um, well you'll have to let us know if you come on the ascent and go to pub night and i'm wondering if it's going to be something that will stick because so far it's not a popular activity on board no matter what activity it is the activities team is fantastic honestly our favorite activities team we've ever had on a cruise ship. They have gotten to know everyone like they are best friends with you. And honestly, I feel like they are. <laughs> <laughs> the next category we're talking about is entertainment. This is also super near and dear to our hearts because we absolutely love entertainment and have seen the entertainment on every ship minus that of Celebrity Infinity and Celebrity Millennium. So we know what we're talking about when we compare these shows. We have seen two shows so far. We have seen a show called Bridges in the main theater, and then we've seen one of the Edencast shows called Shimmerbox. We have to start this by saying the talent on this ship is out of this world. Out of this you world. will be blown away by the singers and dancers in both casts. And the acrobats, the aerialists, the muscle men, the hand balancing acts. It is truly mind blowing the talent level on board this one cruise ship. That being said, we have to go into each show and just tell you our honest thoughts. Bridges, as Jordan mentioned, is the main production show. The whole concept is bridges around the world, but the deeper meaning is the connections we all have as humans to each other. Although it is a spectacle to be seen, 
it had a slow start. And we do think that if they ever revamp this show, that the beginning will change. But once it got about a third of the way in, it really ramped up and felt like a really good celebrity show. The show is high energy. Like Jared said, it's a spectacle. The screens behind show incredible bridges and cityscapes from places all around the world. Overall, the show was very, very good. But yeah, the concept didn't always maybe hit the audience in the way that they had wanted to. We did still like it. And if you came on The Ascent, we would recommend seeing this show. The other show, Shimmerbox, Jared actually got to star in, which was very <laughs> fun. I will just say this. Do not miss the Edencast shows. The Edencast is phenomenal. The shows are incredible. You will want to get to the venue at least one hour beforehand to get a seat. That should be your rule always on Edge Class ships, but especially on new ships like The Ascent, get there to get a seat so you can enjoy the show in Eden. I just have to add one thing. The choreography is phenomenal. The choreography is so unique and whoever is choreographing these shows, kudos to you because the choreo is flawless. We're going to touch very briefly on Wi-Fi because we know that's important to a lot of you at home. That Wi-Fi has been hit or miss. It has impacted some events on board like deal or no deal. One thing to know is the Wi-Fi in our room has been good. The Wi-Fi on the pool deck has been non-existent. This all to say, we have had a fantastic first few days on board the brand new Celebrity Ascent cruise ship. But there is one thing that people are so upset by and it goes across the board across this entire cruise ship. It's been talked about in the Facebook group for this cruise. It's been talked about at dinner tables. We've heard people bring it up to us um, in lines and at bars. And that is that this doesn't actually feel like a maiden voyage. If you're not familiar, Celebrity did a weird thing and actually added a few preview sailings as well as a media event before the maiden voyage. Now, media events are very normal before maiden voyages, so I'm not going to say that that's not. But what people expected was to feel like this was a special maiden voyage. And what we have come to see is, well, there's not much different than any other sailing out there. Stepping on board, there was not any champagne. The captains or the cruise director were not there to greet you. It was just a couple of crew that were there saying, welcome to the ascent. And there was really nothing happening when we got on the ship. There hasn't been really any large parties, and it wasn't until last night that we actually received a gift in our room. Now, if you have not been on a maiden voyage before, typically there are gifts from the cruise line in your room every single night. On the Wonder, on the Edge, on the Celebration, on multiple other ships, we've had multiple gifts in our room. So far, we've received a hat, which is very nice, but people pay a premium to be on this sailing because it is supposed to be special. I think the harshest uh, take was taken from someone on Facebook who said, we think it's really bad that the president of Celebrity Cruises, as well as the godmothers, which is Captain Sandy and her sister, weren't on the ship to greet people and stay on at least a few days until the first port day. It just shows where their hearts actually lie. It's with the people that didn't have to pay a dime to come on the cruise ship, which was the media sailing right before this. We, of course, love Celebrity. We think this is a great brand. But, you know, these are honest thoughts and feedback coming from all the cruisers on the ship. So we really hope that that is heard by Celebrity because we would hate for people to fall off of the Celebrity bandwagon, if you will, because of one maiden voyage. Like I said, people typically pay a premium to come on this week. So you're paying a lot of extra money to be here for special events and feeling like you're a part of something brand new. That energy has just been a little bit lost this week so far. We'll see if that changes. And if it does, of course, we'll report back in our full review. That being said, we come on board for the experience itself. I could go without a gift every day. I could go without the champagne coming on board. I just want to make sure that the crew and the food and the experiences are fantastic. And overall, they have been fantastic for us. Let us know what you think of this review. Do you have any plans to come on the Celebrity Ascent? Or do you want to after seeing this little first impressions video? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up. And until next time, see ya. See ya.